nor was he alone in forming a steady relationship with an enslaved woman called Fibba, who quickly learned that she could resist his advances and even castigate his excesses. Fibba was one of many enslaved women who entered relationships with empowered elite males. Women of mixed race seem to have been preferred. Brian Edwards suggests um, those who were young and of tolerable persons are universally maintained by white men of all ranks and conditions and as kept mistresses. They frequently manifest a fidelity and attachment towards their keepers, which if it were not virtue, it is something very like it. In terms of their compliance, therefore, they are common, commonly as decent, perhaps um, even um, perhaps not as solemn as those of marriage. This was a situation in which women who could not refuse the advances of a free man turned his lust to, the, to their advantage and to that of their family. Being the kept woman of a planter or a merchant was a status that came with limited and conditional influence, resulting in certain amounts of privilege and a better standard of living as long as the relationship endured. For example, Robert Douglas had six children with an enslaved woman called Kuba. He had them all manumitted, and in his will he made provisions, including the mother, by the way, um, and he, in his will he made provisions for them to receive an annual sum of money, a slave, and in the case of his son, he also wanted him taught reading, writing, and a trade, and all this at the expense of his estate. Douglas also asked for his executors to um, attempt to free a woman called Patience, but he does not explain what the connection is. Eliza Cook became friends with Richard Cardin. This was the son of the one who was tormenting Beto. And by the age of 18, she had two children with him. Cardin exchanged two other slaves he had for her and her children, and eventually set her free, gave her property, and when the children were old enough, he found them work on, their, on his estate, on the estate he was managing. Jordine Wells, better known as Juggy, Hannah, Cotto, and Kate were all enslaved women on William Wells' estates, but they had to wait for his will to be set free. Apart from that, however, he did make monetary bequests for them and graded them. Uh, Jordine and Hannah, per, for instance, got more than, than the others. These relationships offered an opportunity for Mutual, mutual exploitation. The enslaver found somebody to manage his household and satisfy his sexual needs, and the enslaved gained improvements in standards of living for them and their family. On the other hand, a once privileged woman could just as e easily find herself losing ground once the relationship ended or her keeper moved away. Could this have happened to Beto Douglas? It is very likely. Um, Comerford's mistress on the Wells plantations offer another example of the situation. She seems to have feared a loss of status when he left the island. The manager's log shows her as selfish and callous. Was she? It's very possible. Callousness is not um, the, the, the reserve of any particular group. It could happen to anybody. However, it is also possible that she felt threatened and overcompensated by being stingy and unfeeling towards those who were weaker than herself. She attempted to manipulate and control the new manager's mistress, who seemed on the verge of replacing her. She also brought five mulatto women into the house to help her rule the roost. All this suggests that she was attempting to fight her marginalization by a new regime that seemed to be taking over the plantation. In conclusion, the image of the enslaved as a submissive, docile creature 
was far from the reality of Caribbean enslavement. This was the image promoted by the abolitionist propaganda. It was far easier to gain public support for an unassuming, threatened population than for an aggressive, conniving, or as Ramsey implied, a treacherous and cunning people who were prepared to kill, maim, poison, damage, and scheme for what they wanted. Often, they were trying to modify what, that which they had to live with. Survival instincts colored the day-to-day -day life of the enslaved people, and the actions that evolved from these instincts undermined the system from its inception. The inefficiencies and expenses that they built into the slave economy meant that it could not survive. Thank you. <laughs>